So we made an educational video on what it takes to become an online voice actor, and with the exception of unmotivated idiots, everyone loved it. One of the points that Rundown got to was introducing voice acting amateurs to the world of audio interfaces and the bare basics of recording engineering. Now let's say your eyes were open and you went out and got yourself an audio interface. Not only have you given yourself an immense amount of control and quality that you never had before, but owning that little box opens you up to a huge world of recording equipment. The real world of recording equipment. You see a mic on stage or in studio? Chances are it's an XLR. This could range from a Shure SM58 to a Neumann U47. Not sure if you realize this, but the $100 mic you probably started off with leaves a whole lot to be desired. Everyone wants to set up grade goals, but they don't know where to go. That's where we come in. I'm really cool, and this is your microphone catalog. I love you. Some stuff to go over before we get into our list. I need to explain to you the three types of mics we'll be talking about as well as introducing you to preamps. The first type, and it was mentioned in the last video, are condenser microphones. These have a good sensitivity leading to a more detailed sound and require 48 volt phantom power. The majority of the character acting you hear in cartoons and video games is done on condenser microphones. There's also tube condensers, which use an older type of electronics but produce a sound some engineers find to be more natural. Tubes don't require phantom power because they come with their own power supply you plug into the wall. The second, dynamic microphones. These are less sensitive, a lot more durable, and see frequent use for stage, broadcast, and narration settings. They also tend to be cheaper, but there's a catch for that we'll get to in a second. And third would be ribbon microphones. When you think of a classic warm sounding recording, you're probably thinking of a ribbon. Some recording engineers find it to be by far the best sounding of the three, so why am I even talking about the other two? Ribbon mic drawbacks would include weak durability compared to the other types, as in if you blow or get spit in the mic, you might damage it. So this is one of the few cases where a pop filter would be considered mandatory. On top of that, a ribbon mic has a limited lifespan coming in at about 10 years of consistent use. Over time, the ribbon inside gets worn out and you'll need to replace it. They're also not a very economic choice because a good ribbon mic that works on a wide variety of voices is gonna run you at least a thousand bucks. A preamp would really come into play for the last two types because they're not very sensitive or quieter than a condenser mic. Now what's a preamp? It's a piece of hardware you run your mic through that boosts the input but in a proficient way leading to a lower noise floor and a more defined sound. Big. Cool. Big. Cool. Any piece of equipment you run your mic through will color the audio in some way, so you wanna make sure you get one that doesn't color it bad. To get a preamp that'll actually make a difference, you'll need at least $300. If you wanna get a really cheap one just to try it out, go for the Art Tube MP V3. So those are preamps. Recommended for condensers, strongly recommended for dynamics and ribbons if you're on a budget interface. And if you needed this video, you're probably on a budget interface. All right, so with that knowledge, you're ready to build a mental catalog of microphones. Knowing these will help you gauge what you wanna put your money towards as you move forward and upgrading equipment. So how do you go from an SM58 to a U47? Here's the latter. I already mentioned one of these in the first part, but the 2020 really is the thing to get if you're looking to spend as little money as possible. Also, a lot of people just getting into this think USB mics are the only thing Blue puts out, but they actually have a good line of XLR condensers and you'll be seeing a couple more on this list. Those three on the bottom are sure handheld microphones. The 57 and 58 are pretty much the same thing if you screw off the metal grill. These are considered to be the best microphones you can get for under $100. With a decent preamp, the SM57 beats microphones that are five times the price. But like I showed before, a decent preamp amp is relatively expensive. The SM86 is the same form factor with a similar sound, but uses a condenser capsule instead of dynamic, so it's a bit more sensitive and needs phantom power. If you're starting out but want to avoid the very bottom, this is where you gotta be. Moving up, the SM7B and RE20 are the go-to mics of narration, broadcasting, whatever. RE20s serve their broadcasting purpose so well, you see them everywhere. If you're doing character acting, I would advise against an RE20. It colors sounds so well for broadcasting that sometimes it sounds weird for other applications. The 7B is the same deal as an RE20, but less expensive and more versatile. One thing about the 7B I hear a lot is screaming and other loud noises sound incredible going through it. The Bluebird sounds really nice on vocals, but doesn't perform too well on anything else. Audio-Technica has a ton of mics between these two, but the 4033 is the first product on the price ladder that gives a significant boost in quality from the 2020. The Rode NT2A is just a nice versatile mic to have around featuring a variety of pads, polar patterns, and high pass filters. All right, now you're stepping into the big boy leagues. I'm putting the 47 and 50 together because they're really similar. Some like the 4050 for its multiple pickup patterns, others like the 4047 for how it sounds on vocals. Both are great. Now the Neumann brand represents quality. Anything with that logo on it is guaranteed to excel at its application. A lot of audio companies have lines of low budget products. Neumann doesn't. The $400 difference between the 102 and 103 is a less detailed high end. Next two would be our first ribbon mics on display. While most ribbons don't use phantom power, Blue's Woodpecker does 
does for a boost and high end most ribbons don't usually have. Royer's R121 is a more classic sounding ribbon and at 1300 is still a reasonable price compared to how expensive microphones of this category can get. Okay, now you're in the huge boy league. As you can see, Neumann's kind of taken over the screen and for a good reason. When you want to put a lot of money towards an expensive microphone, the Neumann brand's the safest place to go. The U87 sees use on so many albums, cartoons, and video games, it's come to be viewed as the go-to voiceover mic for professional projects. The U47's all that, but can record a wider variety of things, which is why it's a thousand bucks more. And Blue has releases even in this price range, which I'm sure shocks people who thought all they made was the Yeti. While price is a good gauge of determining how good a piece of audio equipment will be, keep in mind there's no real number one best microphone out there. There could be a best for deep male vocals or a really sibling female voice, but you won't know for sure until you try it yourself or ask a professional who has. Your voice might sound good on a mic that's 300, but not as good on a mic that's 1000. Doesn't mean that mic's overpriced, it means that out of 6 billion people, some of us are bound to sound differently. After watching this, you've heard about 20 new microphones. One of those might be right for you. And using the magic of eBay's buyer protection program, you should be able to try a few.